You talk to an American entrepreneur in Beijing about the challenge of starting a business in China. What did he yeah. tell you? Well, it's not often I get to do these kinds of stories, and I really enjoy them when I do. I got to spend some time at Great Leap Brewing Company here in Beijing. It is the first craft brewery here in the city, and it's uh, the story of a pair of married entrepreneurs who essentially worked hand-in-hand -hand with the local regulators to make sure that as they brewed, as they crafted their brews, they also crafted regulations to go along with their entire industry. And they are really, as a result, defying the stereotypes about how difficult it is to do business here in China. It's no accident that the first craft brewer in Beijing is called Great Leap, not to invoke a painful period in China's past, but to capture the spirit of leaving safe careers to start something new. Which means take a great leap when you're young and fat, or take a risk that you can absorb. Their leap began in 2010 when Carl Setzer and his wife Liu Fang left the boardroom for the brew room. Carl is from Cleveland, Ohio, and worked in IT. Fang was a government interpreter. Making people happy on a daily basis is the best way to spend your time. In the years since, their craft brewery expanded from this 110 year old courtyard in Beijing to three locations in China's capital. Great Leap employs 125 people. It specializes in craft beers made with Chinese ingredients like Sichuan peppercorns and Shandong honey. It's been a hit with Beijing's young middle class. Great Leap has actually never had to place a single advertisement. Their marketing strategy? Word of mouth. It's a popularity that spread one glass at a time. You've already outgrown this space? Yes, yeah, we outgrew this space seven and a half months after we opened. But it was a battle. It took three years to source a local supply of malted barley and four years to locate a Chinese supply of hops. When he started, health regulations for craft brewing didn't exist. The original license that we had, which was totally compliant for our original location, was the same license you would give a Starbucks. Hot and cold beverage production. No other way to define what we were doing. So they worked with government officials to craft rules as well as beer. Beijing now has a license for craft brewers. That's the result of working hand in hand with government officials that understand the evolution needed. Last month, Chinese President Xi Jinping promised to inspire and protect entrepreneurship. It's an important message, says China expert Cheng Li. Their support is crucial, and uh, uh, their well-being is very important for China's next phase of economic development. The brewmaster behind beers like Iron Buddha and Little General isn't worried about competition. The market, he says, is big enough for everyone. Beijing is a city that represents 22 million people, and all of them want something better. Carl and Fung say whether it's through local partnerships or government incentives, supporting something better for consumers isn't just a great leap for brewing, but for China itself. And of course, it also tastes good, as, I, as you can see. I pretty much enjoyed the story uh, all around, uh, Susan. But you know, not all entrepreneur uh, stories are this easy, and certainly everybody has their failures before their successes. But in this case, Carl had that appetite for risk. His wife, Liu Feng, had the experience in the government, and that really helped them navigate the circumstances here. They are hoping that some of the changes the Chinese government is making is going to help other entrepreneurs follow in their footsteps even quicker.